What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. We are going to keep it real today. And what I mean by that is, well, I'm going to share with you guys some realities of things that happen when we're doing stuff, more specifically painting. Now, if you guys saw the last episode, you would have noticed I showed you guys in detail how to prep and paint your engine bay with the engine still in the car. And at the end, I said, here it is, and I'm gonna share with you guys a final product. I do a final unveiling of the car once it's all back together, so on and so forth. But here's the reality. I started peeling some of that plastic back on the front, and I could just tell. In fact, I said it in the video. I said it looked like it was a shade off and it was a little bit more yellow, but once I started pulling that plastic back and I could see the tops of the fenders, let me tell you, it was like three shades off. It was like eggshell versus snow. It was off. And I was just like, oh my God, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not allowing this. I'm like, I will re-mask up what I need to mask up. I'm going to scuff down and I'm going to respray. And I'm going to show you guys some of the things that I went through going through this process, you'd think, oh, no big deal. Just scuff it down. You know, we'll throw on the proper white because maybe the Oxford white um, is a little bit more yellow and the car had been resprayed in something more of a pure or bright white. So let's just go and get a whiter can of paint, which I did. Let's go get another can of clear because, well, I used the other can on there. And well, here's the reality. You guys are going to see everything from, sure, Mask the car up, I scuffed everything down, I wiped everything down, everything should be good to go. You're gonna see paint reacting. You're gonna see me spraying primer on top of the reacted paint just so that I could save it and keep from having to sand everything like right down. Um, you're gonna see me get really frustrated when I re-clear it, the new bright white, to find out that the clear is actually most likely the culprit for the yellowing. So take notes, don't use this clear. Don't use this clear if you have like a silver, a white, anything that's a light color, this is going to take and turn the shade to something more yellowish, more darker. So no, Duplicolor 1K clear. Maybe it's a quality in terms of its durability for what it is. You got to remember, this is only 15 bucks. So needless to say, you're going to see that. And then you're going to see me dive into some unconventional stuff just to save the whole project. Because what do you do when you're that far invested and the same thing is happening again and you've already saved paint that was reacting or wrinkling or whatever you want to call it? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned to see exactly what happened with this engine bay. And finally, we're at a place where I can unmask the car and be happy with it. So stay tuned. So I think that was a hell of an intro. Um, this is just one of those perfect opportunities to share with you guys realities because as much as you want things to go smoothly, you can do all the prep in the world. You could eat well, you could have slept well, you could be just thinking that all of your environment, all of your prep, everything is perfect and stuff out of your control. It just goes and messes it all up. And that's exactly what happened here. You can see now, that the engine bay is pretty much where I want it to be. And I just had to walk away. I had to call it quits while I was ahead. Sometimes we need to do that. You know, we want to achieve perfection. Perfection should always be the ultimate goal. If we get close to that, you know what? Don't try and go that extra step because you'll probably just end up messing it up. If you guys ever worked on something and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna do it a little bit more, or it's like when you're spreading Bondo and you got a 
really good slick and then you're like i'm just going to give it one more pass and you give it that one more pass and then you end up lifting or pulling some up well you got to know when to call it and i called it you guys are going to see everything that i went through in order to call it and to get to where we are right now all right guys I started peeling off some of the masking after I said, oh, you know, everything will be good. I did notice the slight little tinge of yellow when I was looking at it, but with everything else masked off, I really didn't notice the difference until after. Now, if you look at the rad support versus here, or you look at here versus the top of the fender, um, it's a yellowy tinge. So the camera's either going to make it look better than it really is or potentially even worse than it actually is. Long story short, I'm not happy with it. So what does that mean? That means we're gonna do it again. Means gonna scuff down everything that I've just painted with this purple scotch pad. And then the only difference is I don't need to put any primer. All of that material that's on there will act as a primer. So we'll scuff it down and I got this Polar Arctic White, which to my understanding is supposed to be the whitest of the whites that they had. Disregard the fact that it says this, but the reality is this car is a super bright white. Clearly it's no longer Oxford and whites are really difficult and challenging sometimes guys. You know, a car will look super bright and super white on its own. And then you'll get another white car that'll park next to it and you'll be like, holy shit, my car almost looks yellow. Which actually, the 91 Dutch Coupe, here's one on its own. It looks bright white, especially with the white ice pearl in there. But if you get actually even the Cali Coupe next to it, the Cali Coupe is a way brighter white than this guy is here. So... Needless to say, we'll scuff the clear down. It's been almost 24 hours, which will be more than enough. That 1K clear, this stuff dries up super quick. So I had to get another can of this. So now I'm in the engine bay for an extra $35 or so. I had the scotch pad and some other more plastic and masking tape. So I'm going to be in for another 40 bucks. But I'm hoping that the white is going to be closer. So needless to say, I'm not going to bore you guys with any of the prepping or time-lapse stuff. You guys have already seen how I've done it. I'm going to have to remask down under here a little bit. You know, I really just wanted to get perspective on the difference in the color. But I'm going to go ahead, get that done, get it resprayed, and hopefully the outcome will be what we're looking for. I could have left it. You know, a friend of mine, he's just like, oh man, just leave that. Can you even notice it? Well, I can notice it, and with everything already masked off and I've put this much time and effort in, why wouldn't I just go ahead, scuff it down real quick, respray it, and be done with it? All right, so here we are again. I can already tell how yellow it is, and I have realized that it is most likely this is the culprit. So as much as I would like to normally give Duplicolor the benefit of the doubt, this was way whiter as soon as I started spraying that on. In fact, you can see where I let it sag here. You can see the color of that clear. So I would love to, I would love to say it was maybe a bad can, but that is the second can from a different store. So, <sighs> engine bay looks nice, but as soon as I unmask this, it's going to be the wrong color. So, I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to get inventive, run to the store. I might just have to spray this thing with single stage. Honestly, I, I don't even know at this point. All I know is that if I put lots of clear on and I make it look shiny, it goes yellow. All right, guys, this is one of those Hail Marys. And um, this clear is still tacking up. And sometimes when you do paint stuff, you might as well take some risk when you're already this far deep. So this is Duplicolor's white engine enamel. And I am spraying it right on top of that clear coat. And I can already see the difference in the white.
I don't know if the clear and this will blend together. It is an engine bay after all, but you know what? That looks better. So this is one of those times you got to improvise and just kind of go against the grain. You put all that time, all that effort in to do things the right way. And all of our prep was there, did everything. And I could have left it alone. In fact, a lot of you guys are like, you should have left it alone the first time around. However, that little bit of yellow just would have absolutely driven me nuts. And especially for any of you guys that are going to see this car in the future, you'd be like, oh man, that looked great on video, but oh man, he didn't really do that good of a job. The paint doesn't even match in there. Whatever you guys want to say. So needless to say, I needed to try and fix it. Now, I do believe Oxford is a more yellowish white than what this car is. Um, I think that this one has been painted a brighter color. I could be wrong with that. Maybe the Oxford is the same. Maybe it was just, it's been the clear the whole time. Obviously we know the clear had an issue, but um, you know, I had to do something. So I went ahead and I sprayed that Duplicolor engine enamel in here, the bright white. Will it work? I have no idea, guys. Um, fingers crossed. It's not going to be 100%. It is going to be a little bit different, but what do you do? What do you do in a case like this? I can let it dry up. I can scuff it down. I can try painting it again. I can get a different clear. At that point, I'm going to have so much paint and material in there. Almost don't know what to do with. So in this situation, um, I'm just gonna let it be. At least that's what I'm saying right now. In uh, 20 minutes, I might change my mind. So this is real life stuff, guys. And I know that it's not only me that goes through it and I'm not trying to hide anything because shit happens, things don't go as planned. And this is no exception. All I can tell you is this, I've wasted a lot of money in product um, and let this be a lesson learned for you guys. Maybe if I just had to use the quality clear in the beginning, um, you know what? I wouldn't be into because I went and grabbed that other can, right? Wherever it is. I went and grabbed this guy. You know, that's another $15 can of paint. So anyways, we'll let this dry up some. We'll come back. We'll debrief and we'll see what the final outcome is. So I hope that you enjoyed all that footage of me getting to this point right here. And the best part is, is that even though in reality, it's like one shade off. And by the time you put everything back in that engine bay, you're probably never going to notice it. Is that once I took the plastic off um, the underside of the hood, the hood is still actually in the factory Cervini gel coat. And that's actually now the most yellow out of everything. So I was worrying so much about what was going on in the engine bay, not even realizing the underside of the hood is actually now the worst part of the whole ordeal. Am I going to go and paint the underside of the hood now? No, absolutely not. I am going to paint up the hardware that goes here black because it was kind of surface rust. I am going to get the sticker off and I am going to wash all the dirt from the underside and all those things. And this engine bay is going to look phenomenal. But again, that's where I'm going to call it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this real episode of the infamous project showing you guys realities that happen especially when you're painting and it's not just because i'm using duplicolor guys i have run into situations using professional products and i've suffered from reactions i've suffered from contamination solvent pops all of those other things so all in all the fact is i'm under 100 bucks in materials to get this engine bay where it's at now so and i am happy with the end product and i'm sure it's going to last and look great for many years to come. I wasn't going to film the reassembly of it, but I know there's probably a couple things you guys are gonna ask the question. So how'd you do that? Or, you know, how do I do this? So on and so forth. So I've picked up the GoPro and here we are. I've already reinstalled the prop rod. And while, of course, I went ahead and repainted some key items, the latch that goes in on the underside of the hood, the actual locking latch, redid the uh, wiper motor, coil bracket, 
and all the necessary hardware that goes to bolt that stuff up. These guys right here, I'm about to, about to bolt those. I even went ahead and sprayed this guy here for the power steering line up, so he's gonna be nice and shiny. So we'll go ahead and get bolting that stuff back in place. And then we're gonna, you know, route our wires and try and get everything nice and clean back there and along the sides of the inner fender wells and the aprons. And instead of running the harnesses, over the top here, I'm actually gonna run them down below. I wanna try and keep things as clean as possible up top for uh, what we're doing. I actually have a new battery tray. I accidentally ordered the 79 through 86 tray, which would normally go on that side. I think I could get it to fit, but it's actually stubbier. So we'll see if I can make it work, I might make it work. I did order the proper one from LMR, but um, we'll see. a little nicer. So here I'm actually going to push the brake lines down that I've already pushed underneath this separator. And I'm going to get the harness down under there as well. And it's going to be a tight squeeze with the brake booster. So similarly here, as to the harness and the brake lines, you can tuck your vacuum tree right about there. Plug in our map sensor and you know what? We're gonna tuck it down here, tie it with the salt and pepper shaker the vacuum lines, whatever you want. Um, you can secure it, you wanna throw a zip tie on it, or whatever you wanna do. You know, I'm gonna clean some of that up. Just kinda of trying to find homes and places for everything. And then once I've done that, I'll go back through and I'll clean things up accordingly. So, so far so good. One thing down on this side, guys, is you want to try and run your wiring down on the bottom side of the strut tower. So you got to move your master out of the way. Push all your wires down. All right, guys, um, there's some solenoids that are on the back side of the passenger side strut tower. You can remove these if you want. Just note there's a vacuum. There's some vacuum rerouting that you need to do in order to achieve this. And it's really not that hard. You can pretty much just cap off a lot of the vacuum stuff. And there's lots of videos online showing you guys what to do there. Uh, Cause there's different ways that you can do it depending on what exactly you plan on deleting. So keep that in mind. Um, I'll go over a few things here in a minute. I'm just actually going to reroute this guy down along the bottom side here. And I oh, actually got a vacuum leak. Where's this going here? This is actually open. So, emission solenoid, another one that you guys can remove, taking up space, and this is where it would have come off here, so it wasn't even plugged in. I don't know what the point 
of it even being on here was. Oh yeah, look at all these vacuum lines are all destroyed. Um, you just have to keep in mind, if you're running this on this side, you don't want it near the header because the last thing that you want is to burn through the plastic because it does get hot over there. So you gotta keep that in mind as well with your wiring harness because we will be running it down along those areas. So there we go, there's not much left here. Um, the EGR was actually bypassed to begin with. So it's not doing anything. Okay, so got our HVAC system going to the vacuum ball. So there is a vacuum ball that is in the inner fender well here. So all that'll really happen guys, if you delete the vacuum ball, is you're gonna lose your HVAC controls when you're under wide open throttle. Because when you're under wide open throttle, you aren't making vacuum anymore and you require vacuum in order for your HVAC controls to work. But since, um, but it, you know, it's only for that time when you're really onto it. So if you feel like you're not gonna be in your wide open throttle that much, then the reality is you can, um, you can delete the ball. Now it's totally, going to be a personal choice for you guys. Um, I'm keeping it in this case. I've had cars where I've run it. I've had cars where I've deleted it. So it's really whatever you want to do. A lot of you guys have asked me about EGR, EGR delete, um, bypass. I'll probably have to save that for another video. Um, I do have a couple cheats for it that I can share. I'm sure there's lots of other videos on the, on the tube that can uh, share with you guys some other ways of doing it as well. We get a new cover for this AC line that's looking pretty ratty. I'm gonna get some rubber nipples for those, clean those up. I love these little rubber cap kits. There you go guys, nothing like nice new shiny stickers. I gotta say, like they're they're okay. They're not the greatest. In fact, your smartest move would probably be to stick them down and clear coat on top of them, but that could make a mess in itself. So they're good for what they are. Um, I figured I'd try them out. I wanted to see what the quality is. They're a little off. They honestly look like they were scanned and reprinted. This one might've been recreated that looks like a scan, that looks like a scan, but whatever. All right guys, battery's back in the car, got the proper battery tray, did a test fire, everything's running, sounding good, no vacuum leaks, even though I bypassed the EGR, got rid of the therm actor sensors and all that stuff. So all is good here, and uh, I'm really happy with the way that this engine bay turned out. One little trick that I wanna show you guys that I did let me turn the car off here. All right, so two things that I did while you guys weren't looking. Well, three things. Number one, I got the battery tray in, got the battery installed. Number two, I actually installed the proper temperature sending unit in that lower 
GT40 intake. So now the factory gauge is working again. So I can get rid of that external cheapy thing that was hanging underneath the cluster bezel. So that'll be gone. Number three, and here's a nice little trick for you guys. Do you guys know what these are right here? I'll give you a guess. They normally go right here for your stock air box. I ordered a fresh set of these from LMR and they work really well if you want to get rid of the factory radiator brackets. And you can go through these existing holes right here and drill a small hole in the top part of the rad and just a nut on each side and away you go. Super clean, right? A nice little cinematic of things for you showing you guys all the little nooks and crannies that i managed to get some of those that i wasn't able to get it's hard even with a rattle can to be able to get into every last spot but you know what otherwise this thing looks a hundred times better than it did before and we kind of preserve the top sides of the fenders making sure that no more peeling no more fading none of that stuff will happen got our nice painted up hardware everything is aligned Everything is working, everything is great. Tidied up things in terms of a little bit of a wire tuck, call it a poor man's wire tuck, but you still have access to everything instead of having to get underneath your inner fenders and accessing your starter solenoid and everything else. So there it is, the final product. And again, if you guys might have, maybe you guys saw that little spot that I oversprayed down in the headlight area down there, a little bit of paint thinner will get that off. But there it is guys the only thing now before this thing can be ticked off and marked as complete is the quarter windows are in fact out again and i'm giving them the automotive goop treatment so they are sitting over here i took both sides out and i just didn't want any risks um, that other epoxy it was working on that passenger side but you know what i pulled it out anyways and i went back to the old shoe goo trusted stuff that's fixed so many things for me in so many ways it's uh, pretty much i wouldn't call it urethane but it's pretty close um, your next best option in terms of being able to reinforce those studs probably would be urethane but be sure to stay tuned i'll let you guys know how that all turns out and finally over here in the back side i've been busy aside from cutting tons of grass and doing a bunch of stuff around the house you know, I try and keep my hands as dirty as I can and finally got this guy out. So that was a huge pain, probably about eight hours to get that thing out of here. And a lot of people are like, oh, why didn't you just lift the cab off? Well, if I lift the cab off, number one, I would have had to get it over to my commercial spot. Number two, then the cab's off the truck. And while I'm waiting for stuff to get rebuilt and fixed up. So anyways, we'll figure out what's wrong with that and hopefully get my parts getter back on the road again because let me tell you not having a truck 
is challenging, needless to say. So that's it for the Kelly Coupe, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing this transformation. There's gonna be one more video on this car, and that is going to be some accident repair. And I had it all in the original video, but then that video probably would have been about an hour and a half, but I go over how I managed to straighten up some of the frame rail, get rid of some of the dents and the kinks and the inner aprons, and just overall clean and tidy some things up because, well, a lot of the front end pieces on this car had been swapped. I already showed you guys how to do some panel alignment when we realign that fender. So be sure to stay tuned to see what's going on there. And as always, stay tuned and we'll see you guys here next time on The Infamous Project.